So Illinois has done a lot of things recently that are less than ideal in the general public's eye. I have a different take on some of this stuff and some of the stuff I agree with. So we're just going to go over a little bit. The first one was their decision to just basically, I mean, there's more to it than this, but they basically just released all prisoners short of like being felons. Under the new law, people arrested for many criminal cases, including battery, robbery, and vehicular homicide, cannot be detained no matter the severity of the crime. Unless there is evidence, they're a flight risk, and a judge can only detain someone for murder and armed robbery if there is a real and present threat to the safety of the community. Now, I agree. There is something wrong with the system and people getting hold, held. But I don't believe that was the right answer because there are some cases like repeat offenders or somebody that got caught red handed or somebody that habitually doesn't make court dates. They should be detained. Like that should happen. However, on the other side of the coin, and again, I have a totally different view on this since I got caught up, which I'll explain in a second. On the other side of the coin, there's innocent till proven guilty. The only way this works is it applies to everyone. Everyone needs to be innocent till proven guilty or no one is innocent till proven guilty. Then it's guilty till you prove your innocence. I'm on the side that innocent till proven guilty is the way to go. A couple different reasons here. Obviously, you know, my opinion would have been different two years ago, but that's the way life works. The first one is dude is still locked up in prison, without bail, now for two years, has still not had his trial date. And if he's found innocent, he'll have spent two, lot, two years of his life in prison for f all. I mean, really, no reason whatsoever. He should have been innocent till proven guilty. I could be wrong, I haven't done a background check on him, but from the documents I've seen, he had a clean record, he wasn't a flight risk, he didn't have habitual missing of court dates. Innocent till proven guilty. The second reason is because when they were trying to keep me locked up. And if they would have had their way, I'd be in prison right now without bail. They had a couple of different reasons. All were hilariously ridiculous. I'm just going to give you two. I think there was like five reasons the prosecutor brought up in total. But I'll, I'll just give you two so it, it kind of paints a picture for you. So the first reason why I should be held in prison without bail until my court date is I drove my girl all the way to Florida when she got subpoenaed in. I had the gall to make sure she met her subpoena date. Because I had the gall to make sure she met her subpoena date, I should be held without bail indefinitely until I go through trial. I don't really understand the logic with that. But that, that's not an exaggeration. That was a legitimate reason why they wanted to keep me locked up. The next reason, a little over a decade ago, I completed the methadone program. I don't know what that has to do with the price of tea in China today. However, that was one of the reasons why I should be held without bail. Essentially, if those reasons were used on me, it means they were used on other people. So people are being held without bail because potato. So I have a totally different outlook on whether or not people should be held. We'll just leave it at that. But yeah, so because I improved my life over 10 years ago, did a complete 180 and became a whole new person, you should be locked up in prison indefinitely until your court date. Guilty until proven innocent. So that's why I have a different opinion on this is because I believe in innocent until proven guilty. And either that privilege, that right is given to every single American or none of them get it. If even one person is held guilty until proven innocent, that sets a precedence and it will affect everything. So, yes, I believe Illinois would, had good intentions with that, but I believe they missed the mark. Now, after releasing all these prisoners on the street, what do they do next? They come out with their own AWB. 
With the governor's signature, the law takes effect immediately, banning the sale, delivery, and purchase of dozens of assault-style weapons. Such firearms currently owned must be registered with state police. Long gun magazines are capped at 10 rounds, and for handguns, 15 rounds. If you're not familiar with an AWB is, that is an assault weapons ban. Typically, it will attack particular type of rifles, magazine capacities, different features that could be on a rifle. Illinois had their own little thing of what they think the general public doesn't deserve to have, even though there's a whole bunch of prisoners running around now, which may or may not be dangerous. We won't give an opinion there, but they could be, potentially. They decided no. Their citizens do not deserve the right to protect themselves with a list of features and magazine sizes, which is absurd. So how did Illinois take this? Well, number one, a whole pile of sheriffs were like, we're not going to comply. We are not enforcing this. This is unconstitutional. And they were threatening their jobs. They were basically like, hey, you guys either enforce this or we'll put somebody in place that will enforce this. Will that make a difference in the short term? No. A bunch of sheriffs don't enforce this, but their kids or the we're going to pretend that this doesn't go away and this is something permanent, kind of like the FOID card. We'll pretend that that doesn't go away. Within so many generations, after people being brainwashed, it will ultimately be enforced. So that is a band-aid over the leak in the dam, which will hold back the water for now because I don't think this is something they can hang on to anyway. Now, why do I say that? And how can you fight this? First one is there's a bunch of lawsuits going to be coming out. I mean, that's obvious. We know that's going to happen. Those lawsuits will likely be very successful. There's petitions. You can always sign those. I've never seen a petition actually accomplish anything, though. Like, I've seen petitions from, like, removing the NFA to just piles of petitions. I've never seen a petition go anywhere. So the best bet is the lawsuit. Find out who has them. If you want, you know, jump on, be a plaintiff. That always helps people. The biggest problem they're going to have, though, is brewing. So in brewing, they were like, you guys don't know what the hell you're talking about. From now on, for a gun law to stand, it must have text, history, and tradition around the time the Second Amendment was written. Why is that, you may ask? Because you have to remember, the Second Amendment wasn't from the government telling the people what they're allowed to do. If you notice at the beginning of the Constitution, it says, we the people. This was a document from the people telling the government what they're allowed to do. In there, specifically, it says, shall not be infringed. That is a letter to the government. So what exact power was the government afforded with the Second Amendment? Zero. So, in order for a law, specifically a gun law, to be constitutional, there must be text, history, and tradition around the time the Second Amendment was, was written. There's also been several Supreme Court cases that went up, went up and found that things in the AWB are completely unconstitutional. The biggest hurdle you have is in Heller, he has two arguments why things like the NFA should stand. He calls it dangerous and unusual weapons, which is an affray. That's completely ridiculous. It was basically brandishing a weapon combination with disorderly conduct, and that's how you got to an affray. And in an affray, when it was describing the law, one sentence in there used the terms dangerous and unusual. He just took that sentence out, got rid of the rest of the law, said because this was around the time of the Second Amendment, this is a ban on firearms. Somebody was even charged with an affray for riding a horse into a courtroom. A horse isn't a weapon, like not anything that's on the NFA anyway. That just goes to show you it has nothing to do with any type of weapon. It's how the weapon is brandished. The second reason he said is because he said there's two militias. There isn't. Nowhere do you see anywhere in the Constitution or any of the documents written back then anything to indicate that there are two different militias. It always says the militia. The militia as in one militia. The history in Heller is wrong. Several justices have brought this up, but it has not been fixed yet. Justice Breyer said the historical evidence conflicted with Heller. He recalled that in McDonald, we had professors of history who ran departments in the English Civil War. And they all said the history in Heller was wrong. 
But even with the wrong history in Heller, still, like that, even makes the AWB in Illinois unconstitutional. And let's not forget, any gun law is unconstitutional because in the Second Amendment, how much power is the government afforded when it comes to weapons laws? Zero. Zero. None. None whatsoever. So, ultimately, this will get shut down. Whether it's got to go to the Supreme Court and it's five years from now or whatever, uh, short term, there's not really a whole lot you can do besides your sheriff's not enforcing it. Now, the sheriff's not enforcing it. If they can hold it off for five years or whatever, how long it takes to get up to the Supreme Court, then yes, that worked. It was effective. But what I was saying before is, yeah, that sheriff may not enforce it, but a couple of generations down the road, a sheriff eventually will. So that's just the band-aid. But that bit, that band-aid might be able to hold back the flood just long enough for it all to get shut down. So there's not really a whole lot you can do except for move the hell out of Illinois and stop voting blue. Yeah, I know red's not much better, but stop voting for people that are openly against guns. It's a problem. Now, after the lockdowns, I think we do have the voter base where we can change out these governors and stuff because a lot of people had their eyes open because now it's not a problem over in Africa or a problem way over in California or a problem somewhere on some suburb city of Chicago. No, when the lockdowns happened, the problems were right up in everyone's face. Dude, people move like locusts from gun shop to gun shop, buying everything. And it changed their opinion because then they found out that all these gun restrictions that are met for those people over there, those criminals, well, they found out they've been lumped in to the same box as those people over there, and now they can't buy a gun. They have to go through background checks, there's waiting periods, there's a whole bunch of red tape and laws and hoops they have to jump through that they never expected would affect them because gun restrictions were always for criminals. Little did they know, the secret word here is criminal, and when they say criminal, they're talking about every average American. So, hopefully it'll get fixed. Hopefully. I feel bad for you Illinois Z people. Illinois, Illinois, uh, however you guys want to pronounce it. You pop drinking bastards. Anyway, if you'd like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. If you'd like to support me directly, go to my Shopify, onlytechfans.com. Uh, at the time of filming this video, there's no merchandise there, but it's supposed to show up tomorrow. So hopefully when this video drops, it will be there. It will be a limited run, like I'm doing with everything. So, I mean, you got to get what's there because I want it to be special to the buyer. I don't want the buyer to be like, oh, hey, I got this. And the guy's like, oh, so I can buy one right here. So I'm doing limited runs on everything. Everything is a one-shot deal. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, don't forget to subscribe.